Welcome back to The Decent Garage and welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video we're going to be talking about the fuel shutoff solenoid on the VE Cummins 12 valve engine. Uh, this is a very common issue that I see come about with a lot of people bringing it up uh, and it can present itself in various forms and I'll tell you about that in just a second. So the fuel shutoff solenoid is this uh, solenoid, it's got a stud here where it's applied 12 volt power when the key is on it's got a spring-loaded plunger in here, and the stock plunger has this rubber tip on it. So what happens when you turn the key on and start the truck, uh, the solenoid's activated, the plunger pulls back and allows fuel to flow. When you turn the key off, the spring-loading of the plunger lets it engage and shut off the fuel to the fuel supply line. The issue is that when you start messing with your fuel supply and your fuel load on your pump, playing with the fuel screw, governor spring, timing advance, uh, fuel pin, all of the above, it starts to increase the load when the plunger is then activated, little chunks of this rubber tip start to get broken off and go into your pump and into your delivery valves, which can cause issues. And the main issue that it causes is your truck won't shut off. Um, so if you've had an issue where your truck won't shut off, this is probably the culprit. Now, it can present itself in another way as well, how it happened to me, and this is one of two times that I've had to have my truck towed. I was driving down the freeway, and my truck usually holds 75 easily on the freeway. Uh, and I just started to notice I was losing power gradually, and, and I finally couldn't even keep up at 60. And so I pulled off. And uh, the truck was just running horrible. I turned it off and it just kind of sputtered to a stop. Uh, so I turned it back on, kind of limped it to the next exit, turned it off again and it was worse. So I had it towed home and turns out this was the issue. Uh, part of the uh, rubber plunger had come off so it was blocking some of the fuel supply and uh, it wasn't running as efficiently as it should. So another part of the story is I tried the part that I'm going to show you today that fixes this. And this was three years ago and it didn't work on my truck. So the product I'm going to show you guys about today is uh, it's a plunger, same design, but it has a brass tip on it that's pressed in. You don't have pieces of this tip breaking off and it still shuts off the fuel supply. Now this is a part that's been around for a um, couple of years. A couple guys used to make them and now Eric at the Hungry Diesel uh, sells them. So I contacted Eric and said, hey, there's so many people asking about this. Uh, let me let me get one of those from you and uh, try and make a video on it. And I'm going to try and get it to work on my truck. Because when I tried this piece three years ago, it didn't work on my truck. It wouldn't shut the truck off. Uh, it just wouldn't work. So I ran a manual kill switch. I'm kind of sick of the manual kill switch at this point. I want it to just shut off with the key. I actually installed this yesterday and I figured out what my problem was, why it didn't work, and I'm going to show you that. Um, so if you're one of the people that uh, has tried this and it didn't work, stay tuned and watch the video um, because I think we can get it to work. And this is a great upgrade for the price. And remember, order this from the Hungry Diesel. I have a promo code, Decent First Gen. I'll put it on the screen uh, that you can use for 10% off your whole order at the Hungry Diesel. So make sure you're using that promo code. Make sure you share that with people. So let me show you guys how to install this. I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks as you're doing it because it is a pain in the butt to get to and install, but I figured out some great ways to get to it uh, that will make it much easier for you. So let's head over to the truck and try installing this. So I spent a couple hours yesterday installing this piece, trying to figure out some tips for you guys, uh, trying to get it to work on my truck because I hadn't had it work before. Um, and then I uninstalled it so I could refilm this. So before we get to installing it, take a minute, find that like button right below the video and hit that like button. That's all I'm asking of you. Let's go get this thing installed. So this is obviously the uh, driver's side of your 12 valve Cummins. Um, we're gonna have to access this fuel shutoff solenoid and I'm gonna try and show you where it's at. It is right back in there. So there you can see the stud with the um, wires going to it. So it is in a very inconvenient spot. Let me show you some easy tricks that will help you get to it. Um, it's a little bit of work, but doing these preemptive measures to get to it will make the job of replacing it so much easier. 
So first of all, what we're gonna do, we have to take the throttle rod off and then we're gonna take the, all the linkage off so these two half inch nuts will come off and then we can move all the linkage out of the way. So the nut on the top is an eight millimeter nut. So just gently break that loose. I'm gonna get in there with a magnet so I don't drop it. There we go. And then I can take the wires off. So I've got two, and then I've got one going to the KSB. We can talk about that another day. But I'm just gonna unplug all that and just move it out of the way. Now the fuel shutoff solenoid is a 15 16 okay? And you'll see, I can get a wrench on it, but I can't get much movement. The difficult part about getting to it is this bracket right here. Now, I've seen people do many different things. They either bend this bracket out of the way, they put a crescent wrench on it and bend it, or they'll get a, a grinder or a Dremel or a hacksaw or something and cut it off. Um, but let me show you guys, it's actually not too hard to just temporarily move out of the way. So I'm gonna, now this is, I can't even get my camera in there to show you, but let me describe. So right here, there will be a 3 8 inch uh, screw right there. So just remove that screw. And then over on this side, there is a, there are two torque screws and one hex screw. And so what I did, because I didn't have a long Torx wrench, is I got this little Torx bit, I got my quarter inch ratcheting wrench, and just put that in there and was able to get it right in here and just gently undo it. So uh, they are kind of uh, awkward to get to, but it is definitely doable. Okay, so you just have to remove those three. And then once those are removed, so I have them removed already, what you can do is just slide that bracket completely out of the way, just like that, okay? So don't mess with cutting this thing off uh, just remove those four bolts and you will easily be able to have access. Okay, now we can get at it and I just broke it loose already. Right there, so you can see this is what I would call a gutted fuel shut off solenoid. So there's no plunger in it because what I did is I pulled the plunger in the spring out and just ran that manual kill switch so that I didn't have to deal with the plunger. So what I'm going to do is uh, get my brass tip plunger, the, the magic bullet with the spring, and there should be an O-ring right here on this. Now, if you're someone who has had issues with this product working, you need to make sure that the O-ring from the original fuel shutoff solenoid came out. My issue was I had an O-ring still down in there and it wasn't letting the plunger engage fully to shut the fuel off. So there should be one O-ring right here on this brass piece and no other O-rings in there or on here or on the plunger. All right, so we've got our solenoid, our, our spring and our plunger and then there is the O-ring right there that I was telling you about, so make sure that's on there. And we're just gently going to feed it in there and screw it in.
Okay, now we're gonna put the wires. So we're gonna put the wires back up on this stud. Get our little eight millimeter nut. Sorry, my fat hands are in the way, but you get the idea. All right, so we got the new fuel shut off solenoid with the magic bullet in there all in. We need to put this bracket back. So I'll put those uh, four bolts back in and then we will give it a, give it a test, see how it does. All right, so we've got all those in. So you can see they're kind of difficult to get to, but if, if you use a, a quarter inch socket with that bit, or you may have a better Torx and hex uh, driver that will work better, but those three are somewhat difficult to access, but if you move the throttle linkage, it's not bad at all. And then that one on this side, the 3 8 inch bolt. So we're gonna hook our KSB back up. Let's put our throttle linkage back on and our intake pipe And there we have it. So uh, pretty straightforward job. And uh, some of you guys are gonna be tempted to not move that bracket and to try and get to it without doing that. I would highly encourage you to just take the time and move the bracket. You can't tighten the solenoid down far enough without that bracket moved or something done to it. So just take your time and do that. All right, moment of truth. now. It's not really a true moment of truth because I did this yesterday and it worked, but I'm gonna show you guys. Also, it's like 32 degrees out here. So a little bit of a cold start for the old girl. And another thing, I couldn't find the keys and they were right here in the ignition all night last night. So that's great. All right, so we're gonna let the grid heater cycle. Okay. All right, let's try it. Boom. Let's give it one more try. So it just snaps off, it shuts off quick, uh, no hesitation. So like I said, if you're one of the people that have had issues with this product, 
make sure you've only got the one o-ring on the fuel shutoff solenoid and that an old o-ring is not stuck down into where the plunger goes because that could very well be your issue but i would highly recommend this product and as i mentioned at the beginning couple things do this before you have issues you don't want pieces of that rubber plunger floating around in your pump affecting your fuel supply so do this it's kind of a, a preemptive maintenance type thing just get it done Another thing is make sure you use my promo code decent first gen 10% off your whole order. Eric is a great guy, great customer service. He wants to help people out. If you're on Facebook, you know that he's on there all the time, helping people troubleshoot and diagnose stuff. I don't know how he has the time for it, but he still does it because he loves this community. So, uh, go join the, the best Facebook page out there. First Gen Cummins 89 to 93. That's my favorite Facebook page for these trucks. So go join that page. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit the like button. That really helps out. If you see anyone asking about this issue, make sure to share this video. That'll also help out. So people get the word that this is the issue and that there's a pretty easy fix for it. So thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you guys in the next video.